When logging into a blank database for the first time, you will be given a set of codes from the onboarding team. The codes represent the corporate code, which is your facility. There's one corporate code for all of your sites. If you have one location, typically your code will be L001. If you have more than one location, your location code will represent that given site. Typically L001 would be the first site, L002 would be the second site, and so on. You'd be given a username and then a password. Put in all four values, corporate code, location code, username, and password, then click on login. It will tell you that you have a fail-safe login that is only good for a specified period of time so it's very important that you will create an employee in the software with your own code that you will log in with going forward. Click OK. It says you must enter minimum setup data in the general setup before proceeding. Click each red button in the general setup and add one entry. So we're going to do just that. Everything that we see in red we're going to fill in. The first thing is employees. We'll Click on employees and add either an owner or an administrator, someone that can do everything in the system, specifically including setup. So I'll put in test values. You need to fill in all of the green required fields. So the first name and last name, the login name, which is typically going to be your first name, password, and then re-enter the password, the same value, and then a home number and mobile number. Click OK, and this is saying that we need to have a strong password which meets these criteria. So I'm going to put in a strong password. Click OK. Do you want to add one entry? Yes. Now we have a username that we can log in with going forward. Click Close. Then we see banking. It asks for a bank account and number. If you don't feel comfortable in putting in your actual bank account number, you can technically put in any value that you want. And then a bank name. So I'll put in Bank of America in this case. Click OK. Do you want to add this entry? Yes. And close. Then lastly, we have an option up here that says Units and Tenants with two buttons, Unit Setup and Add Edit Tenants. Click on Unit Setup. We have different options in terms of unit types, which represents distinctions between your units like self-storage versus RV parking, climate control. You can certainly set that up here, but you don't have to. What you have to do in this screen is click Add Units. We click Add Unit. So we need to make at least one unit to continue on. If I make my first unit as 001 and ending as 001, it's going to make me one unit that's numbered or named 001. If you put an ending unit number of let's say 100, it's going to make 100 sequential units in 1 to 100. So it's very important to think about saving your time. Yes, you could go ahead and make unit by unit and put starting unit number 1 and then we finish this process and then make our next unit 2 with the ending number of two, but if you have, let's say, your first 20 units, one through 20, are of the same type, they're all five by fives, they're all this price range, then make that change. So I'd put 001 to unit 020, and I'm going to have 20 units that are all of a given type, of a given width and length, and so on. Put in all these values. The monthly rate is the standard rate, the street rate, what it normally goes for, the weekly rate. You may not have a weekly rate. You might only do monthly billing, but it does ask you for a weekly rate. It doesn't mean that you're forced to use weekly billing, but it does make you put that in. Security deposit, if you have one. If you don't have a security deposit, put in the value of zero. What is the floor? Floor one. Do we have an entry location? Maybe it's an elevator. Door type. And do we have op other options, including whether or not we have power? We click Save, and now I'm making 20 units of this type. Once it's saved, know that we can go at a later point and make changes. So I can add more units. I can go here to Modify Units and change those 20 values. Maybe, maybe unit number 10 should have been a 10 by 10. I can come in here and edit it and change 10 by 10. 
Once that's done, I have one more option where I have to add or add a tenant. If you don't have any tenants yet, click Add and just put yourself in as a person. So I could put in test in this case. We can delete this person later. We don't actually have to move them in. But it does require that you put in someone's name. All you have to do is put in their name, but you could put in a full address if you want to. Close. Once that's done, we have the initial prerequisites the site link needs to move forward. I close that down and now I'm in the site link program. Of course there's more that's involved in terms of your initial setup like creating your charges, what happens when people are so many days late, who are your other employees and so on. But at this point we are now past our initial stage and can move forward with whatever we want to do in SiteLink.